No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Mother f What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over! No comment! The f Brian Keane was also unavailable for comment. Welcome back to The Horror Show. I'm your host, Dave Thomas. It's another Brian Keene free week this week, but we have somebody else in the studio with us. Merry Christmas! That's right. It's Phoebe. It's time for our annual, and I guess it is annual because we did this last year. Yeah, thanks It's our holiday spectacular. Woohoo! Yes, it's uh, Christmas week. Uh, you'll be hearing this... Uh, Thursday. About, what, three days before Christmas, I guess? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, three yeah. days. Yeah, because Sunday is Christmas. Mm -hmm. So there you, there you go. Uh, this is, of course, a inclusive show where it's all holidays, not just Christmas. So, yeah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, happy anything else we might have missed. Yeah. <laughs> we love everybody. Well, maybe Okay, you do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know better with me. Yeah. Um, we don't really have a sponsor this week. But uh, I, I do want to mention, uh, we've been talking, uh, when Brian and I were doing shows, that we're going to do a charity marathon, 24 hours live broadcast uh, for the Scares of Cares charity for our 100th episode. Yay, 100 episodes! Yeah, I know. And uh, one of the things that uh, has happened since then is that there are now shirts available. Ooh, in celebration. shirts In celebration, okay. <laughs> Hype girl. <laughs> okay, no more hype. Yeah. So anyway, there, there's t-shirts available in celebration of this episode uh, that uh, the Project Entertainment Network has put together. And all proceeds for these shirts will go to Scares That Care. That's cool. Yeah, it is really cool. It's a cool. great charity. No, it is. And I, 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 I think this is really cool. And it's a really cool shirt. Uh, if you go to the uh, Horror Show page on Facebook, you can see the shirt and the link to order them. Which the link is long, and I'm not going to read it here on the show because it's just you typing it in. It's way too much to type. Can so you buy them now? I believe so. The link is, I think, live. Um, so yeah, give it a shot and let me know what happens there. You got your phone. I'm gonna go to the horrorshow.com. Yeah. Well, no, the horror show the Facebook webpage, page. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, uh, we're getting real close to a thousand likes on our page. So if you have not yet liked the page and want to. Give us a great Christmas gift. That would be great because we're <gasps> awful close. Gift that keeps on giving. Yes, exactly. Much like this show. Yes, you can buy it now. Okay. Eleven have been sold already. Okay. And there's twenty days left to buy. Right. Yeah, because it's limited time. They're they're only going to do. They're it for available a short until of time. January 9th. Yes. That's all. So yeah. That's twenty days. 20 days from now is okay. January 9th. I, what do I know? I, it's math. I, I don't do And we've math. already sold the minimum. Okay. Well, that's good. Yay. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Look, there's feedback. Oh, look at this. All these positive comments. Okay. Well, we'll look at those later. Yeah. Anyway, the shirt's for sale. And uh, please, if you can, buy a shirt to support the thing. And uh, there'll be a lot more details about the charity show uh, when we start doing live shows again, me and Brian. And that'll be the you know first week of January. We'll be back on the air with new shows. Awesome. So anyway, uh, you know, uh, this is the horror show, and we felt there had to be some sort of horror content today, despite the fact that it's a holiday show. Mm -hmm. So we decided we're going to talk about one of the most horrifying things in the world. Yes. Which is moving. Yes. Um, if you've listened to past episodes, especially last week's Best Of, you'll know that Phoebe has moved in here into my house. Whoa! <laughs> she's very excited, as you can tell. Uh, now, she's been here for about two weeks. And uh, my I have not moved in, I'm coming up on 13 years here. I hadn't moved for 17 years before that. But I have moved across the street in, my, in, in the past. I've moved across the street, and i moved across the country twice. And it doesn't matter what distance it is, 
moving is a horrible pain in the ass experience. Yes. And I had never had anybody move in before. And I thought, oh, I'm going to escape all the annoying aspects of moving. Well, no, not really. He was wrong. No, because it's it's still a nightmare. It, it's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> My whole life is in boxes in the living room and dining room yeah, still. Yeah, we, we basically, this house has become a box maze. And uh, the cats like it. They're very happy. Yes, they can they can play amongst the boxes. And Bert has been exploring everything. If you listen to last year's episode, you'll remember Bert was moving one of his boxes around the room here. That he's he, sleeping he plays with. now. He is sleeping right now. In fact, they're all sleeping. Ernie is here. He's our special studio guest. He's napping away on a blanket. So, uh, But yeah, moving is just a pain in the... It's just a pain. I, I don't, and expensive. It's a very expensive. I don't understand why modern technology can't make moving a better process. Like It doesn't seem to me like the process of moving has changed at all in the last 30 years. Like There's no. nothing new to make it you know, I guess those pod things are in advance, or at least you can like pack you up your own thing. You still have to put shit stuff in a box <laughs> it's and the move it show. You to curse. another it's place, okay. and yeah. that's the thing. I yeah, mean, it's it's just annoying, and I, I, you know, I guess the only way to make it less annoying is if you could pay uh, somebody to do pay all the work to do for all you. you while you go to the south of France for two weeks or something. Which you know, I would and consider. if Dave and I ever move into another house, that's what he will do. Yeah, because now I, I can't move. I, I'll lose my mind. Like, seriously. It, I don't like disruption in my home. Uh, I get annoyed when somebody comes here to fix something. So uh, moving somewhere, I just it's not going to happen unless you know I, I win the lottery, in which case it's my own island. So, um, so anyway, yeah, we we've been going through that, and it's just it's very stressful, and it's a lot of work, and you can't find anything. At least all my clothes are in one. Place we're we're now. making progress because yeah, you, all your clothes are organized, and you can get ready and go to work and. You know, we made sure the bed got put together the first night so we had somewhere to sleep. Yeah, that was um, a priority, so we could at least sleep. Yes. So there is that. But uh, I, I just, it's not a fun process. It's just no. not, I mean, it's awesome to have Phoebe here, but the, the moving process is terrible. <laughs> it just is. And, and uh, movers are just crazy. Uh, and d- d- criminals, pretty much. Uh, anyway, it's, <laughs> we're not going to get into that. What they charge to move somebody is just ridiculous. It's it's like I they quote you one price, and yeah. then all of a sudden, well, you need this and this and this and this, and it's more than double, and you're not happy. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, uh, they, I. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say yeah, about that. Can't really get into it, but let's just say that there may have been some shady activity going on. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Look, all I know is all my crap's out of the apartment. All the crap got thrown away that I wanted thrown away, and everything's in one house. Right. I can live with the rest of it. Yes. Honestly, the easiest thing to move is your cat because he's been he was here already since, here. And he's been here since August. Yeah, um, we had a cat sitting mishap, and Bubby came to stay. And yeah. Poor Bubby. Oh my gosh, we had to move the bed. Poor Bubby was so stressed and so upset. He was crying pathetically. We had to catch him and put him in a carrier, so we could move the bed because that's where Bubby lives under the bed. And then we had to keep him in a room for a couple days because we didn't want him to get all we didn't want him out when the movers were here but he's fine now he's acclimated he comes out it's been like a knockdown drag out brawl with sam they both have scars well we, we all have scars yeah we all have scars one way or another they're getting it, it it's, it's a process they have yeah. to get used to each other so so anyway that that's that um i think the other thing we should do to try and keep people entertained today um is uh you know it, it's the holiday time mm-hmm. and uh you know what that means christmas lights well that and cookies cookies we already yes. made cookies yes we made cookies we're actually going to the original thought was we we're going to make cookies while we were doing this and then we realized that uh you listening to the sound of a mixer is... <laughs> would not be that exciting no yeah because it's really loud and obnoxious and yeah. stuff so we, we made cookies earlier uh what kind did you make we made oatmeal chocolate chip pecan and dried cranberry cookies and where did you get this recipe from pinterest okay can you explain pinterest (gasps) and the appeal of it because i don't get it pinterest is just like window shopping for anything in the world you could want for outfits for trips for places for pets for jewelry for recipes i have i have several several different um boards they're boards like you pin it up like you pin it like on a bulletin board 
And, like, okay, recently I was looking at vacation things and I have a, a thing like, oh, you know, spring break dream wish list. Uh-huh. And it's like cruise wear and cruise stuff. And I have one that's like kitties and other cuties. And it's like all kinds of just cute pictures of creatures and things. And um, there's pampering. You can like mark your favorite manicure or the tiara you feel you need to have. <laughs> what? I have tiaras marked. Of course I you do. Have a, do you seriously have a separate tiara page? No, it's in this. pampering. Oh, It's I in see. pampering. Oh, so tiara is pampering? Well, yeah. Okay. This is news to me. Yeah. <laughs> Dave doesn't look at my Pinterest page. I Well, it's to me, and this is just me, mm-hmm. um, I don't get Pinterest. It's just like if I want to find something, like if I want a recipe for some sort of food, yeah. I just type it in Google. And I look it up, and I'm like, okay, and I use it. I don't, this whole, and if I really like it, I can bookmark it. I, the Pinterest thing just seems to me like an extra step. But I know it's ridiculously popular, and mm-hmm. I know the people invented it are probably billionaires. So, once again, it just says, what do I know? You know, it's just me. So. It's just, it's like bookmarking, but with pictures. I would think. You go I, to one place. I guess. I don't know. I just, I, mean, I don't use it. So, that's why I was asking you about it. Like, I hear people talking about it all the time. Yeah. And, it's, it's just, there's a lot of things out there, apps and things. Well, it's really, use. I think there's bad things about Pinterest too, because I think it makes, I think, this is crazy. I think it puts pressure on people to create these Pinterest perfect projects. And there shouldn't be that pressure on making cookies. I mean, there's Well, I have seen, I, I don't Pinterest know. Pinterest fails. The- well, is that what it's called? Pinterest fails. I don't fails? know, but I know where because you're... there's a website where they'll like they'll show the Pinterest perfect thing, yeah. and then they'll show like what somebody did. That's yeah. Like if I tried to make something, for well, example, we you know. had some <laughs> Pinterest fails. Okay. Uh, Remember when we made the um, cinnamon bun pancakes? No. <laughs> yeah, we made them. I remember pancakes were terrible. Was that those? Pinterest fail where good intentions come to die. Okay, so yeah, if you want some comedy... Pinterestfail.com. Pinterestfail.com. That, that, that I do look at occasionally because it is funny. But the pancakes... I just remember one time I made pancakes. Was that that, was that, that recipe? Because I don't... It just didn't look like it did in the thing. And I... I... Well, t- to be fair, 90% of the time, most food doesn't look like it does when it's pictured because food photography is a whole I know, art that's, form. I did, like, that's seriously, true. I, when I worked in L.A., I used to... You know, working a lot of food stuff, and they're the you know the food stylist people, and I was just fascinated by the amount of work these people put into their job because it's just crazy. And food photography is a whole art form that you have to you know it takes a long time to master because food is actually hard to photograph. Okay, holy crap! There are some really ugly, terrifying things on this Pinterest fail page. Yeah, that no, it's it's if you've never holy seen it, it's crap. really it's really funny. I don't, there used to be one for Etsy, but I think that one went away. But Etsy is you buy things. No, no, from I know, people. but I'm just saying a, a site where it was like funny Etsy things. But I, I'm pretty sure that one got taken. The person took it down because it was too much work. Yeah, uh, that one was funny too. But the Pinterest fails is also very entertaining. Holy but anyway, crap. we made the cookies. We made the cookies. They're pretty uh, good. And she asked for my review earlier, and yes. uh, I had to point out that you can put shoe polish in an oatmeal cookie, and I'd eat it because I love oatmeal cookies. He really so did say that. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't care. But these are good. They're not, as I said, to be honest, they're not. The greatest cookies ever. No. I think you said the recipe called for cherry, dried cherries. Yeah, which I think would have been good. Yeah, it's not think, a real sweet cookie. No, it's not. So maybe we, if we'd made them again. But you had another recipe that you want to try that I well, thought sounded really good too. This is a recipe we use at work. Okay. And we've made it. Okay. And it's, you're going to laugh. It's a chocolate chip pretzel cookie. I'm not going to laugh. I'm going to say that sounds like crack. Well, here's the thing. I was like, you know, looking for interesting things or trying to, to do as much scratch cooking as we can we have to our goal this year was to increase our scratch cooking and we already are cooking just about everything from scratch so now we're focusing on dessert so it's a it's essentially a chocolate chip cookie recipe with chocolate chips but broken up pretzels in it so we made it for um an event at school and they're kind of ugly cookies i think i put too much stuff in them so we kind of played with it a little bit but let me tell you, they're delicious. And if you like chocolate chip cookies with nuts in them, it gives it very much like a chocolate chip pecan cookie or a chocolate chip walnut cookie without the nuts in it. And um, it's it's tasty. I actually had my director of operations who um, likes to come in and taste things. Yeah. 
he doesn't cook at home. He came in and told me that Monday that he made cookies that week. And I said, from scratch, he goes, he's a Duncan Hines mix or whatever. Yeah. Those mixes in a bag. But he put pretzels in them, and he was quite proud of himself. So that's the next recipe that we're going to make. And uh, we will be posting recipes. Yeah, we'll post these on the uh, the uh, Har Show Facebook yeah. page. Yeah. So you can check them out there. What is your favorite kind of cookie? Now, I already said mine is oatmeal. I love um, oatmeal cookies, so... Uh, I like, I'm not, here's the thing, I'm not, cookies are not my first choice of dessert. Well, I know cake is your, cake we've is, talked about this before on the show, cake that is, you're oh, obsessed cake. with cake, yes. But, um, uh, I don't know, I, uh, I okay. like, I have memories of mola- chewy molasses cookies from the farmer's market growing up. Oh, yeah, those are good. Delicious. Yeah. I had somebody today at work brought me some cookies they made. It was a ginger chewy cookie. It was delicious. I ate them both. I didn't bring any home for you. <laughs> well, that's okay. Uh, there are only two. No, it's, um, I don't worry about stuff like that. I like coconut macaroons. I like... Uh, that's true. You, you, you're, you like coconut, which yeah, I do I like not coconut. at all. That's like one of the things that we really disagree on. Yeah, and I like coconut. that mustard. Um. <laughs> I like mustard on certain things. I don't like mustard on everything. Like, mus- mustard and turkey should not. Oh, uh, mustard is one of the most glorious things ever invented. Mustard um, is wonderful, just yeah. not on turkey. Oh, uh, wow. Well, um, I disagree. <laughs> so, I mean, I like I like cookies. Okay, so I just, you know. I mean. Well, do you remember the first Christmas you came home with me? And we well, made yeah, I mean, ice bat cookies. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? I, 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 do, I do remember now. Yeah, they. <laughs> My sister We've been I, dating for a, about a month. Well, it was coming half, up on two months, two months, almost two months, and I get invited to Phoebe's family for Christmas. Right, because I felt bad. He was by himself. Well, I, I, you know, I basically have no family, so uh, <laughs> and I, I was a little concerned based on my experiences, uh, you know, in the past. I, I think I talked about this before on the show, but I'll just really quickly. My, my family, in my family, when I was a kid growing up, my family gatherings were. Basically, adults yelling <laughs> the whole time at each other, and family feuds has been going on for generations. Like there was always somewhere, no matter who you were visiting, there was always a, a situation where there was like two sisters or something, and the one sister couldn't be in the house when the other one was there because one of them stole a spoon from the other one in 1932 or some such nonsense like this. Okay, kind of. It, Happy, I don't have to deal with no, it. No, it was there was always some ridiculous story. This person was mad. This person because they looked saw him at the mall and didn't say hello. Or it just it was like constant nitwittery. No, it's so, not like my um, family's not like that. Yeah, you know, this was this is what my memories are from childhood. So yay. So anyway, uh, I get invited to her house and I'm like, uh, okay, this could be terrible. But no, her family's nice and they're nice to me, which I still don't understand anybody being nice to me so but they were making cookies we always used to make cutout cookies with my nephew and that was the year he and it always ended up that me and my sister ended up making the cookies and he would wander off and play some kind of video game or whatever so we knew about dave's obsession with ice bat my sister did so (laughs) we're baking cookies and we we made jet my sister made a, a template of ice bat and we made cutout ice bat cookies and she had bought black sanding sugar and we made ice bat cookies with eyeballs and everything yeah and then they weren't very good so they ended up as christmas ornaments. yes yeah, the next year we saved them and the next year we, we made them into christmas ornaments yeah. for the tree yeah but they yeah. kind of something happened to the dough or something i don't remember what it, it wasn't was. we weren't happy with the, yeah, it the dough recipe it didn't come out right because so. you know you got to find just the right sugar cookie recipe because it's a gamble that was one thing my mom used to do um <laughs> She had an enormous collection of cookie cutters. Oh, where like, are they? We're not getting into that. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. No. Uh, anyway, I seriously, like probably like 200 of them. Oh, wow. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah, there was tons of them. And a lot of them, and this is just me, I look at these and I'm like, I have no idea what shape this is. You know, it's just like, and you make the cookie and you have no idea what it is. But she would make tons of these cookies. Like the whole kitchen and dining room was nothing but cookie trays, like everywhere. From all these different uh, cutouts, so um, I remember we made we made <laughs> again when we were kids we made cutouts, but it would end up being my mom would end up finishing because the, the attention span well, for they're too much work. I you know I was basically forced to do all sorts of things when I was young, uh, and you're like 
10 years old or 12, you don't want to be in the kitchen making cookies. No. You want to be doing other stuff. You want to be doing anything probably. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want to be doing yard work. And you don't want to be setting up Christmas decorations. And you don't want to be setting up uh, St. Patrick's Day decorations. And, um, you know, it's just, (laughs) this is why. Those are Dave's happy holiday memories. Yeah. My mom had, like, a house full of stuff. And when I say a house full of stuff, seriously, like, the house was packed. You couldn't, like, move. It wasn't a hoarder, but just. There were things everywhere. And she had all these decorations for every holiday and holidays that you'd never heard of. And it wasn't just like, you know, it wasn't just like a Christmas tree. It was statues and figurines and dolls and wreaths and just like everything imaginable. And, you know, you'd have the holiday and you'd have to carry all the crap down from the attic and set all the stuff up. And then you have to clean it and dust it, blah, 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 blah. And the holiday would end and you have to pack it all up and you have to carry it all up in the basement or up in the attic or wherever. And then guess what? It's a time for another holiday. So you got to carry all that stuff down. This was a year-round nightmare. What holidays do we decorate now for? Honey? None. Yeah. I told much. you the story that the the first woman I, I lived with on my own, uh, it was Christmas time. And she said... Oh, we need to decorate for Christmas. <laughs> and I went and got a piece of paper and wrote Christmas decoration on it and taped it to the wall and said, we're done. <laughs> yeah, nope, that's it. We're finished. We can't decorate now anyway because of burnt. Right now we can't because of burnt. Plus. Yeah. Well, the house is full of boxes. This is our Christmas decoration. Yeah. Uh, we were going to actually, we saw on the internet, someone had taken just boxes and stacked them up like a tree. And we almost did that. But seriously, we can't have a tree because Bert is insane. Bert's one of my cats. You, know, you all know. We know Bert, Bert was one we like, talked about. Right, he's moving boxes around. He would knock a tree down in about two seconds. We think we we are well, not we're, sure what he's going to do, but we're not ready to try yet. So all yeah. my ornaments are glass. Yeah, and I said they'd have to be plastic ornaments. We we decided we're going to try maybe next year we'll have a tree because we've had trees in the past, mm-hmm. but uh, it was pre burp mm-hmm. um, So basically, we'd have to uh, tie the tree in a corner and then have all plastic ornaments on. Or we could put in a big dog crate. I've seen that on Facebook. <laughs> Like they take the dog kennel apart and put the put the walls up so the tree's standing, but it's behind a dog crate. I think that's pretty damn clever. But anyway, so it's like tree jail. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, it's for its own safety. Anyway, you, you mentioned the other thing that we were going to talk about here that's holiday related, which is Christmas lights. Christmas lights. Now, people probably don't know this. I'm obsessed with tacky light displays. I don't like nice displays. I'm going to get this straight. Um, like that everyone that knows this is always telling me about that stupid Christmas light fight show that's on TV. That's not what I like. I don't like professional displays. I like a tacky display where some guy has been collecting Christmas crap for 40 years and he's got 9 million inflatable things and trees and stuff. And it's a tiny yard and it just looked like he shook a giant box over top of his house and everything fell down into the yard. That's what I like. Now, so one of the things we do, and I've done this for years, and, and Phoebe does this with me, is we drive around looking for for frightening Christmas displays. Yep. And she has, Phoebe has what I call radar for this. Oh, yeah. Because we, she does, like, I think if we go in this direction, we'll find some good houses. Every year we find an amazing house. Yeah. There, there's a house uh, down in southern part of Maryland that we used to go by every year. That literally, I don't know where they store the stuff. There's so much stuff in the yard. And it's inflatables and light up stuff and stuff that sings. It just it's amazing. That's the one you can that I introduced see, you to. Yeah, well what I like about this stuff too is you can see the glow over the horizon. Yep. <laughs> like the sun is out in this part of town. It was a house down the street from when I, where I worked at one of my schools. Yeah. And I used to have to drive home that way and I would pass it. And so then when we started dating and he said Christmas lights, I'm like, Oh dear, I yeah. know where we need to yeah. go. Yeah, I have to. I, I think I have some pictures on my Facebook page. I have to push it on the horror show page. Yeah. So anyway, this week uh, one of the nights uh, date night. We're yes, it's our is, date night. We go to Starbucks. We get night. giant cups of coffee and we drive around and we look for Christmas light, tacky Christmas lights displays. Here in Baltimore, uh, there's a famous yes display. It's on 34th cool. Street in Hampton. Which, if you look that up on the internet, I can put a link to it on the horror show page too. Uh, it's very, it's seriously famous. It's world famous because yeah. these this is it's a small street. And every house on the street decorates. Like crazy decorations. But crazy decorations. It's like, amazing. There's a house there. And these are row homes, so they're not large. There's a house there. I don't know where the guy stores all the stuff. I, I will put a link to this so you can see it because it's, yeah. it's insane. His yard is packed. There's trains and 
moving figures and, the, and glowing can, things. And, and you just, can walk through some of the houses. Right, some of the houses they let you go in. Every house in the street, when you buy a house on that street or if one of the houses changes hands, you have to sign a contract that says you will decorate for Christmas because seriously, you it's can't... It's no joke. It, the amount of people that go see this during the Christmas season is absolutely insane because it's crazy. You will not see anything else like this anywhere. When we went, yeah. we had to park and like walk. Yeah, you can't... You can't... You can't park anywhere near there. First no. of all, because there's no street parking down in, anywhere near there. Right. And you can try to drive through it, but you'll get stuck in traffic. You it's, sit in a line. You sit in a line to get And then through. like you're walking through and they hand out hot chocolate yeah. and there's music and... But like one of the trees traditionally is a... Uh, an okay. old bay tree because oh. old bay is the substance that you, know, you use on hard shell crabs here, which you now can buy nationwide. It used to be you could only buy in this area, yeah. Um, but um, you know they have an old bay tree. One of the tree has crabs in it because again, it's, it's Maryland crabs. It's you know there's a hubcap tree. There's a hubcap tree. There's a lot of traditional. It's really cool. It, it's really cool. So if you're in the area in the holiday season and you like lights, that's something to see. Yeah. Anyway, I again I love tacky light displays. If you have a tacky light display. Or you know somebody, you have a picture. Feel free to uh, oh, post it to our awesome. show page because and let me know where it is. I I think what started this for me is when I lived in California many many years ago. There's a place called the Becker House in Simi Valley. I have no idea if it's still there because this is, you know, 25 years ago that I lived out. I am googling. You can Google that. But it was again, it was a small house. And the guy went nuts with the Christmas decorations. And again, you would be driving up there, you could see the glow before you got there. So you knew something was up. Um, so I, I know this is like a weird thing to be into. I, I apologize. And, you know, maybe you're not into this conversation. I can't help it because it's, you know, it's a Christmas thing. Um, I'm not much of a holiday fan for any holiday, but this is one thing I do enjoy. So, uh, you know, and I'm not wearing a Christmas sweater no matter what Phoebe said. Oh, the lady passed away in 2014. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, like I said, it was 25 years ago when I lived out there, so. I, I didn't know. But I think that's Aww. what started me on this, where I like to drive around and find these kinds of places. When we were little, that's what we used to do. We would, go, we would get in the car, my sister, my mom, and my dad and I, and we would drive around our, our town. And there was like a trailer park out in the country that the whole, everybody would decorate. So you could pull off to the side of the road yeah. and you could see the whole, up to the whole side of the hill. And they were like... Across the way was an empty field, and people would put, like, fairy lights out there, so it looked like there were fairies, and that's what you did back then. You drove around, and you looked at everybody's Christmas lights. But see, what I, I, I have to I have to emphasize, I, I'm not really into these, like, professional light displays with the no, controllers, wants... and they dance to music. Correct. Unless it's Slayer. If you do a Slayer Christmas light display, then, you know, that's awesome. But uh, Christmas music, nah. Yeah, not into the Christmas music at all. So, uh and speaking of Christmas, another thing we need to talk about, and we actually talked about this last year, is Phoebe's obsession with Hallmark Channel Christmas movies, which yeah. are among, if you want to talk about horror, watch one of these, okay? But, uh, Phoebe, yeah, didn't you say the other week that you think people shouldn't watch these movies? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Put your phone down. <laughs> yeah, well, I was reading about the lady uh, who passed away. Okay. Um, okay, so... <laughs> We're watching Hallmark Channel movies. What are you watching? All right, watching. I'm watching Hallmark Channel movies, and Dave is tolerating me watching Hallmark Channel I'm, movies. I'm off in the other part of the house. And I'm watching it, and there was this one. It happened in two of them, and I got really mad. One of them was like this person was a dog. It was like a dog show person, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> Wait a this person was a dog? Dog show person. That would be they, a much better movie. He was a dog show judge if or the something. The person was a dog. Stop. No. <laughs> That's a sci-fi channel movie. That's a good movie then. Um, and they're showing these animals, and I was really pissed off because they were showing these animals that were getting adopted that were clearly, clearly too young to be away from their their mothers. I mean, eyes barely open, ears barely up, and they're like, "Oh yes, look at this! I'm going to take this puppy home." I was so pissed off. So I saw that in one movie, and then we watched another one, and they did the you. same thing with kittens, and I was livid. So Hallmark Channel, get your shit together. And if you're going to talk about adoption, gosh darn it, be responsible and show age-appropriate animals. Because people are stupid and they're going to take animals that they shouldn't. And it's not good for the animal. There you have it, Phoebe's Christmas rant. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Until, it's... until you know, then she talks to me 20 minutes from now, she'll be raining again. So, uh, but, uh, I, I was just happy you were yelling about Hallmark Channel. Um, <laughs> it really made me angry because it was really irresponsible. Well, it, the whole channel makes me angry, so... Yeah, it's so bad. 
But they it's seriously, like, people talk about like the sci fi channel movies being bad. Those look like Academy Award productions compared to the production values of a Hallmark Channel Christmas movie. They put no effort into them whatsoever. I don't know. Candace Cameron Bure from your favorite show, Fuller House, is like the darling of Hallmark now. She's in everything. Fuller House is garbage. Fuller House oh, is back for a second season. I will say, if you did not listen to the episode where we watch Fuller House, you need to listen to that because it's one of my favorite episodes of last year. You can hear it's Coop's really head fun. explode. Yeah, you can. You can I, like I said last week, because I had it on my best of, I think the only reason we did it is because Brian wanted Coop to yell. It worked. It worked. It works really well. And so. you know the most surprising thing about that was Lombardo's amazing knowledge of, of Fuller House. He well, knew he was, he was Lombardo the right age. Was the right age that yeah. He would have been very young when the original was on. Yeah, I watched Brian, it Coop, too. and I would have been, well, you're a girl. It, that's more of a girl thing, okay. I think, than a guy thing. At least certainly back then. Okay. Yeah. But Everybody they, had a crush I, I think on when the show, that show was on... I know for me, I was way beyond the demographic age range of what that show was for. I think you were for. beyond the demographic age range at six. Well, that's true, because I'm not a happy person, and yeah. most TV shows annoy the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. So, shows like that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yes. What are you doing over there? Rubbing my eyes. Oh, okay. You have a giant blanket on. Are you that cold? I am cozy. Okay. Because now, now that we live together... Oh, Lord. All we've been doing is laundry since I moved in. And we're down to one more, one basket left to do. But you don't realize how many blankets and things you have until you start washing them all. And my mom makes these amazing Janie blankets. And they're, they're so soft and they're so cozy and they're so warm. So I washed one. And then Bert's like, hey, I like this. So then I start unpacking, and all of a sudden, and there's three blankies. One, two, three blankies. There's a lot of blankies. There's a lot of blankies. Yeah. The cats are happy. So, so yes, I'm yeah. under my cozy the, Janie blanket. The last holiday thing we're going to talk about, before we get to another subject entirely, is, uh, and I asked you this the other day so you could think about it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Which, of course, you didn't. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh. If, if you could buy me and I could buy you oh, yeah, anything for Christmas, what would it be? A gift for the holidays. Um, I know what my answer is for you. I can go first. Go ahead. Okay. My answer for you would be a trip to Japan to go to Cat Island. Oh, Cat Island. Yes. yes. So touch the kitties. Cat Island. And then while we're there, can we shake hands with the otter? Well, I was going to say, there's Rabbit Island. Rabbit Island. There's Fox Island. There's an Owl Cafe. Oh, yeah, the Owl Cafe. You can go to the aquarium. There's Cat Cafe. You can go to the aquarium and shake hands with an otter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you would enjoy Japan. So. I would just like the World Animal Tour. Anywhere yeah. I can touch creatures. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, and, that, yeah. seriously, I would take you to Japan so you could go see all these things. Honestly, I don't. some of those islands, I think you'd have to have special permission to go there. I will beg. So, we would, we would set that up. But this is, of course, if money is no object, which... Right now, I can't take you for sushi at the sushi place down the street. So uh, things, things will work out. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, we haven't seen Grumpy Cat. There's the waitress <laughs> at the sushi place. We call Grumpy Cat because she's always in a terrible mood. And she's always our waitress. <laughs> she's always our waitress. But she's we like all, the sushi. The sushi's good, and she's hilarious. She's just like she's just, she's just funny. She's grumpy. Yeah, she's you know she's grumpy me basically. Cat. So, um, um, well, I know what Dave would want. Dave would want an island. Well, I think anybody that's listening to the show knows that. Is that um, I, I have always wanted my own island yeah. where I can be alone and nobody can bother me. Yeah. And uh, But see, the thing is, is I'm not into this idea as, I used to, as much as I used to be because there's that show on HGTV oh. about people buying islands. Yeah. And you realize, first of all, these things are crazy. Crazy expensive, even for just a tiny one. It's just right. It's millions of dollars. And the thing is, is like a lot of them have no infrastructure whatsoever. Oh, so you got to start from scratch. Yeah, so like, oh yeah, you need to build like a, a power a, plant. A, yeah, a power plant, or you need to bring a cable over to put a, electricity in, and, and it's like it's crazy. No electricity, no air conditioning. Dina, no visit. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Well, I don't know that you need air conditioning at all. I don't. Want to take a chance? Well, okay. Well, I don't think pampering. I don't think it's going to happen anytime. Okay, I'm not too worried about that. I mean, I think that's what Dave would like. I think if I could get him anything, I would say I would love for to be able to get him concert tickets to all the shows he's ever wanted to see 
whether the people are living or dead, just like magic theater access <laughs> to to shows that you love. And I can't name any of these bands because I don't know them. Well, yeah, you don't listen to music. I but listen, so, for I the most think part. I think that would make you honestly. Very I've happy. seen most of the bands I want to see at this point in my life because I'm old. I've always said the two things. There's a couple of things I regret never getting to see. One would be Queen. Yeah. When Freddie Mercury was alive, because yeah. I never saw that. Uh, Genesis with Peter Gabriel. Uh-huh. I've seen Genesis with Peter Gabriel. Obviously, never seen them together. Uh-huh. They almost reunited a few years ago, and there's still a slight chance that could happen someday. They're all still alive. Yeah, they're all still alive. Knock on wood. Right, and then Led Zeppelin. I never saw Led Zeppelin, and obviously that that it. Well, they, that would be my gift to you. Yeah, I mean, there's there's other musicians too. I, I would have seen it maybe. Donnie Marie. No. <laughs> the Carpenters. Hell no. <laughs> You're not. I, we're not having that conversation on the show about why I loathe the Carpenters. So. Dave was really excited that uh, when we. Well, were, this before that's we start. That's a segue. That's a segue <laughs> because. Uh, you may have seen I teased on Twitter and Facebook with, that oh. we have a really good story. Yeah, we and do. And again, since it's the horror show, we figured that we would uh, have, we're going to tell this story today. Yep. So, about a month ago, or thereabouts, um, Phoebe's parents have moved to a lovely retirement lovely community. Retirement community. You know, it is actually really nice. It's yeah, a it beautiful is. apartment. The facility is yeah. really nice. Uh-huh. Um, but obviously they had a home and, and you know, they need to sell the home and they need to get rid of the Constance's home. So there was a yard sale. Oh, yes. Um, so I was, you know, obviously she's going to go help because they're family. And I was invited along to be security because uh, if there's anybody that anybody knows who does not like humans and won't put up their crap, it's me. <laughs> Holy crap. So we go to the yard sale. Mm-hmm. And let me just tell you, at different times... I've thought about doing this here at my house to just give her access to time. I will never do this no. as long as I live. No. The, <laughs> no. the strangest people yes. show up for these things. Yes. And it's terrifying. And they'll buy anything. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, they'll anything. argue about the price of her or anything, too. But this, yeah. So the longer the day goes on, the crazier the people get. Oh, yes. I mean, we missed the beginning. There were people there two hours early. Right, yeah. My sister was there by herself, and she people were there at 7 o'clock in the morning buying stuff, and she's like, all right. Luckily, the neighbors came over and helped, but people were, and then people yelled at her because she opened early. Yeah. And she's like, I got to sell this stuff. Dude, the guy wanted to buy it. I'm going to yeah, sell it. I know. People are insane. Like, people they're arguing over like a dollar cup or something. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous. But... So we're there. And like I said, as the day goes on, the people get crazier and stranger. This One of my favorites was this guy that showed up who proceeded then to ask oh. Phoebe's <laughs> sister and Phoebe about stuff they may have had in the morning for sale. Like he's like, did you have any toys. antique toys this morning? Mac did you truck have stuff. any Mack truck stuff? Did you have any beer steins this morning? And he kept asking this question over and over. I wanted to say to the guy, dude. Do you have a time machine at your house so that they actually have some of this stuff? That you can hop in it and come back in time and get it before they sell it to somebody else? And he just kept going on about it. And I wanted to tell him, hey, you know what they did have this morning? A live dragon. <laughs> it was breathing fire and everything. You should have fucking been here. You missed it. It was so cool. I think he would have said, dude, really? Yeah. Cause... I'm pretty sure he would have believed me. But, yeah, that uh, was like, it was weird. He was yeah. like, what, what did you have? Yeah, what he just kept have? asking all these questions. And, and like, these guys were buying there. And I don't know a lot of this stuff. I'm not trying to be mean here. I apologize. I don't know why your parents had some of these things. No, we don't either. Yeah, okay. Because there was like signs, like Miller Lite, like banners that you'd see hanging outside of like a college bar. I have no idea. I'm guessing he got them from the lotto guy. Right. But like the beer mark. But you wouldn't think you'd have these in your house. Yeah. But yeah. Two of them. Your your dad wasn't running a bar at any point. No. So So anyway, these, these guys come and they see this sign and they're like, how much is it? And apparently it was a dollar. Because you guys just wanted to get rid of it. Right. Right. They're literally unfolding this in the driveway and examining every inch of it like it's a lost Monet painting. You yeah. Know? They sold both of them. Yeah. They're, like, they're acting like it's worth $20 million. It's a dollar. Who cares? No. Take, but... Spend a dollar, throw the damn thing in your car, and drive off. But they no. are studying this thing like right. it's a lost artifact. But I was just like, what wait, are you doing? Wait, it gets doing? better. Because then they buy the banners for a dollar and then they need paper towels because we had opened it up and it got wet and had pine needles on it. And he had to dry it 
and get all the pine needles off the dollar Miller Lite beer sign from 19 whatever. I don't know. It was old, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But it wasn't worth anything cuz it wasn't in good shape. And, you well, know, he was think... very excited. He seemed it was in good shape. It was brand well, new. No, it well, whatever. It had pine I, needles yeah. and water on it. Yeah. It's just uh oh. This guy, he was very excited. So we're sitting there for a while. And eventually, I would say around noon, 1 o'clock, it kind of died off. Yeah. And at that point, it was just like basically crazy people that had nothing better to yeah, do that day. Yeah, people would show up with cars yeah. already full of crap. Yeah. Because like, now it's the end of the, yeah. so the run. Yeah, so we're, we're sitting there. I was in the house. Well, I, I thought you were sitting there. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, you were outside because, and you'll, you'll know why in a second, because a car pulls up. Oh, wait, different person. I'm going to talk about the main event here. No, I wasn't here when. Go ahead, tell no, it. But I wasn't no, here. No, 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 you were. I came out of the house. No, no, I didn't see him until I came out of the house. Okay, whatever. Anyway, a car pulls up. A guy gets out, and I'm. A lot of times I say on the show, things may be exaggerated for comedic effect. I have to say, when I tell this story, this is not exaggerated in any way, shape, or form. No, this is the this absolute one hundred percent truth. What I'm about to tell you happened exactly as I describe it. Guy gets out of the car. Looks exactly like Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Holding a little dog. Yes. Like Silence of the Lambs. Yes. I mean, if Buffalo Bill was 20 years older, because he was about 20 Mm -hmm. years old, he looked exactly like him. Yeah, the dog wasn't exactly like the dog, but it was still a little dog. Because I came out of the house. Well, you were sitting there, but we're not going to just, we're just going to go to my version of the story. You were sitting there, and you leaned over to me and said, Wait, no, this is not how, I came out of the house, and the first thing I saw was the little dog. Of course. I'm like, oh, little puppy, little puppy. And I was like, <sighs> and I walk back away because he's talking to my sister and she's being her sunny, pleasant, buy my shit kind of person. And he's, Dave is sitting there watching. Very carefully. And with his hood, hooded sweatshirt up because it was cold. It was freezing. Yeah, we were cold. And I walk over to him and I stand in front of him and say, it puts the lotion in the basket. Get. Yes, because holy crap, the guy was Buffalo Bill, and Dave's like, "Shut up, don't I, entice him." Well, I get vibes from people, and you know this, and I'm telling you, oh. this guy creeped me out like nobody had creeped me out in a long time. And like, my seriously, sis- and he's talking to my sister, yeah. and they're looking at stuff, and I'm t- looking at Dave, and I'm like, "We have to tell her, we have to tell her." So she's over there, and she's got one of those watch things that, like, if your iPhone goes off, she can see she has a message. So I text to my sister, it puts the lotion in the basket. She practically peed herself. <laughs> she practically peed herself. She's like, oh my God. So the guy's talking and all of a sudden he like wants to come into the garage, which is fine. That was people could come they in. They had there. the garage open and they had stuff in the garage. Right. So it was, it was okay. And there was a chair. The he... main thing I was doing is to make sure nobody went yeah, into the house. We weren't letting anybody in the house. Yeah. And... So there's a chair that had already been sold. Well, he wanted to sit down because his back hurt. I'm like, okay. Well, I, you missed because there were, he had a bucket. Your sister. No, that was him. later. That no, was later. that was first before the the main comment. He the bucket was first because there were these random plastic buckets, and he's like, "How much is this?" And, and your sister said, "Oh, that's free." And what did he say when he took the bucket? He has to mix some cement. Yes, I need to mix cement later on today. And Phoebe and I look at each other, thinking he needs to mix cement to bury bodies under. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was well partly because he was sitting in the garage and he's talking. So, what kind of car was in this well, garage? Well, this is this is a little later, but this is yeah, okay. So we're sitting there and yeah. he's talking to me, and I'm like talking to the little dog, a little button. His name is Button. He's very cute, little teeny tiny thing. And he's sitting there and he's looking around. He's like, "Wow, what kind of car would fit in this garage?" I said, "Well, you know, not a real big one. You know, not like an SUV or anything." He goes. I had a big car. I had an old Impala. It was a something. No, Lincoln. I, something, Lincoln, Lincoln yeah. Like one of those big... I had a Lincoln once that could fit three bodies. Swear to God, that's, that's what he said. Absolutely, the words came out of his mouth. And we looked at each and other. he wasn't laughing. And we were like, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. He, and then... This guy was not laughing. This guy was dead serious. And he's like, yeah, yeah I'm not from around here. I'm from so-and-so and... He was talking about the car and the and it fit three bodies and I'm yeah, going. How he lives oh, out in the middle of the woods. Oh my god! And then he gets the pink bucket and he's like, "Yeah, I have to mix some cement later." And something about laying on the ground to put the cement on the 
on the wall or something to cover. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, he's got bodies out there. Yeah. He said something else, too. I he, can't that's remember the thing. what it was. There was a third comment that was not quite as creepy as the bodies in the car, but, but it was, it was very there. creepy and very obvious that this guy is not a good person. But neither one of us at this point can remember what it was. Because it was, Cause know, it was little, like three comments. There was like, like three holy comments. Holy shit. And we're just looking at each other. I, I Seriously, I'm not joking. I, okay, obviously I have no evidence this guy's an actual murderer. We but, don't but, know that. Okay, we make that clear. But this guy was super, super creepy. And the fact that he looked exactly like Buffalo Bill did not help him matters. No. And the fact that he was telling us he had a car he used to be able to put three bodies in did not help matters. This is why I will never have a yard sale. <laughs> I, he, yeah. he was I'm the creepiest. Con- I'm convinced, had I not been sitting there... We would have been in the basement. Yeah, because this guy was scary. Um, like I, I mean, we're laughing about it now, but at the time... Dave, Dave was, was not- so mad at me and my sister because we were laughing yeah. because it was so weird and creepy. You had to laugh, and he's like, why are you laughing? This isn't funny. I said, we know it's not funny, but oh my God, you have to laugh because oh my God, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, so yeah, it puts the lotion in the bath. Yeah, um, that was our afternoon. <laughs> well, I mean, and then believe me, there were other people too. I mean, no, nobody that bad though. That no, was by there far was the, worst. the one guy that was. Well, some guy showed up yelling about Jesus, and, and my sister's like, "I gotta go check that thing in the house." <laughs> yeah, because at that point she was done. Yeah, she, she had had enough of nonsense. That was after Buffalo Bill. Yeah, and she was like, "Nope, <laughs> I gotta go check that thing," and he was arguing with me over the price of. A DVD for the Rockettes when he was getting a bunch of stuff for like literally twelve dollars. This is Jesus guy. Not, that was Jesus not guy. Buffalo Bill. And um, <laughs> I'm just making it clear, the Buffalo Bill guy. Did he buy anything? He didn't buy anything. He took a free bucket to he mix his cement for, for the body. I guess he had been there earlier. Allegedly. If he had been there earlier, there was a lot of tools and sharp implements. He might have wanted. That's those. what he was looking at. Remember, he was oh, yeah. on the front lawn with Jen looking at stuff. tools. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he was looking at that pickaxe. I don't remember. Yeah, I think I, that's, so. I came out. I just remember yeah. coming out of the house and seeing the dog and like, oh, puppy. I'm like, oh, serial killer. <laughs> um, but then the other guy was this old guy with a cane, and he pulled up. He was another one that pulled up in a car full of crap, and he's going through the garage and he's like picking random stuff. And there's a pair of binoculars that I'm sure were worth ten dollars. And, and I'm like, and at that point I had had enough as well. And he said, I said something like two dollars for the for the DVD. And he's like, $2? I said, look, you're getting the freaking binoculars for 10 bucks. They're worth 10 bucks. All the rest is bonus crap. Are you good or what? <laughs> and I like old people, generally speaking. But I was uh, about done with these cheap-ass people who are... Mm. This is what my, my rules for going to this, where I got to sit in a chair and, and not to speak to anybody because I knew I would get irritated. Yeah. Because these people were terrible. I mean... They were just, oh... It, I mean, some people were fine. Yeah. I, w- I would say, honestly, the majority of the people were okay. Right. But the other ones, like, it's, seriously, these people just bickering over stupid crap. And it's like you're spending a dollar. Right. Like, really? Spend your dollar and go home. Yeah. Right. Instead of, like... Oh, can we tell the sweet story? No. No, no, no. Why? Because it wasn't sweet. It was adorable. No. I'm telling it. Ha, ha, ha. Phoebe's in the house. <laughs> yeah. So... Phoebe's getting well, edited. <laughs> so... We're sitting there. My parents, they have a scooter. And these there's these two, like, what, 10-year-olds? I'm not involved in myself. <laughs> okay, fine. There was two 10-year-olds. They were walking down to go to, the, like, the little mini mart. And they're like, how much is the scooter? And we're like, it's $500 and you need parental permission. They're like, oh, man. So they go down to the store. And a little while later, they walk back up. And they've got, like, their Mountain Dew and whatever. And you can hear them talking. They're like, I could buy that. I could buy that. So they next thing you know, they they pick up a little something and they walk up to my sister to pay. And it's a little dolphin figurine, like a little crystal dolphin figurine. And she's like, well, who is it for? Somebody special goes, my mom. Well, then, you know, we all went, oh, except Dave didn't do this. Damn my right. sister and I were like, oh. So then she went and got... Um, a hand embossed gift bag that my mom had made and made him a whole little gift package for his mom to take home to her all for a dollar. It was precious. You gotta follow up a freaking serial killer with something positive. Seriously. It's positive he didn't murder any of us, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, and we sold 
a lot of stuff. No, you did. You guys did really good. You my guys, sister, my sister worked her yeah, butt off. Everybody did because yeah. it was just it was a lot of work. And it, was it was a lot cold. of work. It was ah. Oh, oh. Till we left and we drove home in the freezing rain and snow. Yeah, it was it was like it was terrible ridiculous. Weather. It was like nice in the morning. Yeah. No, at least the sun was out when you guys were doing your thing. It didn't rain then, but oh, it was miserable. Because uh, I was yeah that night it was really miserable and it was so cold. But you know what we didn't sell. Uh your crappy record collection. My records and my eight track collection. I'm of... sure there are people listening to this that have no idea what an eight track is because that's some seriously ancient technology. Thank you, Brian. Well, he is... knows what an eight track is. No, unfortunately, Brian has got awful taste in music like you do. So, well, anyway, I found all your my... taste in music might be better than Brian's, which is saying something. At least you don't listen to country music. I don't like country music. Yeah, country music is Generally garbage. Speaking, no. I'm surprised I heard to defend himself, so I can say it. Country music is garbage. <laughs> But, um, Garth Brooks is not talented. We um, we found like it was very it was sweet to find like the memorabilia things like oh, my first album ever was Donny Osmond's Puppy Love. Oh, played it over and over again. And then I had an eight track, which back in the days this is to show you the difference between me and her. Her first album was Donny Osmond. My first album was Black Sabbath. So <laughs> <laughs> my know. first forty five was Partridge Family. I think I love you. I remember I got that for Christmas. I was like yeah. five, and I got one of those portable record players to play it on. That was a Christmas. Party. We were just showing off how old we are at this point. Cause there are yeah, because there's just, people that don't even know what a record like, what player are you is. Talking? What's a Actually, it was funny. You know, the vinyl is making a resurgence. I yeah. saw something on the internet this week that in the UK, uh, I believe it was last month, more money was spent on vinyl than digital downloads. That's because Rachel <laughs> Rachel Deering was visiting. <laughs> That's true. Rachel Autumn <laughs> Deering was in, uh, in Ireland, Ireland. Uh, earlier this year. and. <laughs> She's an avid uh, vinyl collector. She has an amazing record collection. Like, I've actually never been to their home. I hope to be visiting them at some point. Uh, and just to look at a record collection and, and listen to albums. But she has an yeah. incredible... So she was in the UK <laughs> buying all the albums. I'm sure that's why it went up. No, I think it's just, in general, people are, like, way into vinyl right yeah. now. So, well, I got fun. vinyl. You need vinyl? I got vinyl. Yeah, yeah well. Sean Cassidy, Donny Osmond... It's a shame um, I don't turntable, and I'm never going to have Hey, one. wait, we have a, a vintage 1980s Techniques stereo rack system for sale. Yeah, that's... 20 bucks. Uh-huh, yeah. Pick it up. Yeah, because it weighs a ton. It's yeah, not coming, yeah, we couldn't sell that. It's, it's not coming here. Nobody bought the movie projector. Nobody bought the slide projector. Nobody bought the 8-track reel-to-reel. Again, I'm sure there's people listening right now. What's a slide projector? <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to, to you know... Act like we're 100 years old, but technology it's a, has just techno, well, technology has really marched on, and yeah, um, you know, <laughs> but it, it's a good thing in a lot of cases. Back in the day, that was the that was let, the let high tech you, stuff. Eight track tapes and slide projectors were nothing great. You're not missing anything if you didn't experience this stuff. You're, you're it's okay. It's a good thing. <laughs> you know, trust me. Cell phones are are way cooler, <laughs> except when a certain person looks at Facebook 24 hours a day. Bert's got to stop doing that. <laughs> yes. It's a horrible habit of his. <laughs> Bert should have a Facebook page. Right? This is, we've had this discussion. We, yeah. we were talking about this earlier. Our cats need to do something to make them famous so we can, you know, get some cash. You know, and all they do is sleep. So we need to figure out something. Bert is our biggest hope. Bert is our biggest hope. For that. I, again, I've said this before. I would buy a Roomba if I knew he would ride around on it. Well, the cats are very excited because I brought my mom's sewing machine home. <laughs> so as soon as I have a space cleared, it's hats for everybody. Yes, all the Thomas boys, including Dave, will have a hat to wear. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that'll happen. I promise pictures if it ever happens. <laughs> yeah, I promise you that ain't gonna happen. I just want to see you try to put clothes on Sam. I just want to see you do that. He likes me now. He well, I have some photos from the ER afterwards. Yeah, really, because <laughs> that's you know, not gonna, gonna go well. Well, we have just spent like an hour babbling like idiots. I don't think anyone's gonna listen to this. <laughs> Well, yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah, that's what Christmas is about, I guess. It's your Drunk and rambling. And cookies. Yeah, just... I guess. I we didn't know. drink actually. I, no, I was going to get. The, I was going to get a bottle of wine out, and I didn't do it. Um, I have to work tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And it's an hour yeah. to my bedtime. Yes, <laughs> yes. So. so that's the one bad thing. Well, it's I still because of my commute, I have to be in bed by nine because I have to get up at like four forty-five. So I'm like definitely on like elementary school kid hours, yeah. but could be worse. It could be worse. So, so I mean, I I don't really need a Christmas present. I have Phoebe living in my house, so Aww. it's true. Yes. And having a home with Dave is my Christmas. Yes. Present. And our whack job cats. Now, if we could just get the whack job cats to all get along, and, and wear a hat, then 
That would be the if best. If one Christmas of them would do laundry, that would be amazing. <laughs> I swear. I'm not the only one either. I posted a comment on Facebook. All we do is laundry. We think we're done and we turn around and it's there again. And somebody else said the exact same thing. It's crazy. Well, I, you know, I lived here by myself for almost seven years and I'm always doing laundry. I'm like, I don't wear this much clothes. It's like, do the cats take my clothes while I'm asleep and do stuff to them? That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, I know I have to dress up for work every day. Right. So I have work clothes. Yeah. But for the love of God. (laughs) It's insane. I think we're finally caught up. No, it's because you had a lot of stuff. And moving and washing and and cleaning. Yeah. And organizing. And there's stuff we're going to donate. Right. You know. Well, that's a whole other story. Don't even get me started on that. Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, before we leave, I do want to remind you guys again about the uh, special shirt that we have. For our 100th episode charity marathon we're going to be doing in January. Uh, again, go to the Har Show page, Har Show with Brian Keen. On Facebook, there's a link to it right there where you can order the shirt. All proceeds will be going to Scares and Cares, who we're doing the telethon for. Uh, Brian and I will have a lot more details on the whole telethon and how you can come watch us do it. Um, I promise to make an appearance. She will be there, unlike what Mr. Keen thinks. For a very limited amount of time. I'll be there as much as I can, but it's, it's not, not gonna, gonna be a lot because she yeah, has I have to, to work, work and we need money to eat. No. So uh, <laughs> well it's a true It's a busy time of it's, year yeah, for me. She has a lot it's of hard for me to take extra off jobs right and now. stuff. So she she will not be there the whole time. But I'll be there the whole time. And uh, maybe Bert can make an appearance. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think the hotel is gonna want Bert there. Oh, they don't know what they're missing. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I'm gonna have sleep at Everation anyway. I don't need Bert to add to the Maybe Swartwood will come and Deacon can come along. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> Deacon's cool. He's kind of crazy. Swartwood's dog. Rob Swartwood. You guys have heard him on the show. He is a dog, and the dog's awesome, but the dog is very energetic. He's he's a sweet dog. Yeah, he's cool. But, but I, um, I doubt the hotel is going to let any animals in. Shh, don't tell. What, do they, what happens at 3 o'clock in the morning stays at 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Okay. I'm not coming to bail you guys out of jail. No, I your don't own. need to go. I don't need to start off the year in prison. No. Okay. So we're going to behave. Okay. Crazy idea, girl. So anyway, uh, do you have anything else to say here? Before I we... did and I forgot. We were talking about the podcast. <laughs> this is life with Phoebe. Um, I was going to say something. I don't know. Oh, I promise we'll post cookie pictures, cookie recipes, and we will have... Some photos from our light extravaganza. I have yeah, some on my phone. Good. And if you guys have anything yeah. that you want to share, please, we would love to see your crazy lights. And, and again, if you've not liked the page, we're real close to a thousand. I would that love would be awesome. To get Best to Christmas a, present ever. Uh, well, I'm not gonna get that far, but I'd love to go to a thousand likes on the page before the end of the year. Uh, best Christmas gift ever would be, you know, like $250 million. You know? Let me get right on that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. We buy a lottery ticket once in a while. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Got to pay to play. <laughs> Got to play to win. Something like that. It's kind of a waste of money. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so. So, anyway, uh, I guess that's it. Unless you got anything else. Have a happy Have and a nice holiday season. Holiday seriously. season. Be Thank safe. Thank you all for listening. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you for having us, having uh, me back as part of the Next holiday. week uh, is oh, the, yes. the special Dungeon Master show. Yes. He has recorded it. I have not heard it yet. We haven't had a secret so, preview of it no, yet. Not, I don't know. I have no idea what he's going to do. Uh, it's very top secret. The only thing I know is when uh, Brian asked him what he wanted to do, he said, turn on the computer and then leave the room. Oh, boy. So, Uh-oh. he goes, my show, my rules. Uh-oh. So, prepare yourselves. I, I am sure that it's gonna it be will amazing. be full of surprises and, and hilarity and other things. So, that'll be next week's show. And then the week after, Brian and I, weather permitting, because it is terrible winter around here. But the first week of January, we'll be back with live shows. Uh, so, looking forward to that. Um, so it's been a while since Tim and I have been in the studio together, and I, I personally I, I miss yelling at him. So <laughs> I'm sure he misses yelling at the world. Too. Yeah, well, exactly. So uh, I'm sure we'll have things to, to talk about. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. I'm sure. Uh, so anyway, that that's it. I hope you enjoyed the holiday spectacular too, and uh, see you later. Bye. Bye. Hey, Dave. Yeah. I got a question for you. Okay. Are you into cosplay? Uh, I enjoy it. I don't do it. Corsetry, steampunk, gothic, or rockabilly clothing, Um, shoes, and accessories? I greatly enjoy when Phoebe wears these things. Well, then, you know what you and Phoebe should do? You should visit Subculture Corsets and Clothing, either online at www.subculturecorsets.com or 
drop by their store at the Avenues Mall in Jacksonville, Florida. Tell them you heard their ad on Project I Radio. Fuck that. Tell them you're Dave from The Hard <laughs> Show with Brian Keene on Project I Radio. And you and Phoebe will, will receive a 10% discount off your entire purchase. Sounds awesome. You, or, you know what, if you guys aren't going to go to Florida, you can go to their website. Again, that's subculturecoursets.com and use the discount code the Horror Show with Brian Keen, and you'll receive a 10% discount on your entire order. And you know what, Dave? What's that? If you are a full-figured gal, and you are a full-figured gal. <laughs> that certainly yes. Don't worry, because subculture carries sizes 4 through 4X. And men's clothing as well. So if you ever want to dress up in men's clothing, there you go. <laughs> That's subculturecorsets.com, and use the discount code, The Horror Show with Brian Keen, for a 10% discount.